my name is Nancy O'Hagan. I am the founder and president of the Caring for Carcinoid Foundation. I am a metastatic carcinoid patient. I have carcinoid cancer that is of unknown origin, probably of, it started in the gastrointestinal tract, and metastasized so that my liver is almost full of tumor and I have extensive metastases of solid tumor throughout my body and in my bones. So on a daily basis, there's a great deal of pain that I encounter, and as many of you patients have to endure as well. When I was first diagnosed, it was kind of a funny story because I was working as a tax lawyer here in Boston. For most of my career, I worked in Palo Alto, California. I'm a San Diego native, and I was a tax lawyer there in Palo Alto, and then I was experiencing um, symptoms of flushing and some pain in my bones, but no one was able to diagnose the problem, as many of you patients experience before your ultimate diagnosis. And then here in Boston, I was working as a tax lawyer for a firm downtown called Goodwin, Goodwin Proctor. And that week, I had to give a presentation. I had a lot of clients that needed to have their work finished. And I was running on very little sleep and very little um, food. And so I actually was taking the subway to work, and I collapsed on the subway. And then my, I went home and it was very, it was a very upsetting situation as um, I'm sure it is for everyone. I wasn't, what I was most concerned with after my diagnosis was with how my parents were going to react and how my husband was going to react. We had just been married for one year and he was at Harvard Business School and I came back and he was in, sitting on the couch and I said, um, they just diagnosed me with cancer and I only have a few months to live. And then I called my dad who uh, was working in San Diego and it was an incredibly traumatic time as it is for all of us who are diagnosed with cancer and we tell our loved ones what happens. There's just incredible consternation, sorrow and fear. So my primary care physician was able to request uh, an appointment for me with an oncologist the very next day. And I went to see this oncologist and he immediately deduced that I had carcinoid and not metastatic liver cancer. So after being in a fair amount of shock and trying to deal with the chaos in my family, I was determined with my husband to start the Caring for Carcinoid Foundation. What we felt was that we could assemble a group of top researchers and a terrific board of directors in order to make a push that was very aggressive and continues to be very aggressive to have a structured business plan to achieve our goal, a structured scientific roadmap to achieve our goal. And the goal of the Caring for Carcinoid Foundation, the mission is to discover targeted therapies and an eventual cure for carcinoid cancer. Our vision is to eliminate the suffering of carcinoid patients and related neuroendocrine patients their families and their caregivers. We devote 100% of our individual donations to scientific research that's devoted to supporting carcinoid and related neuroendocrine tumor research. And in this way, we will, and in others, we will find a cure for this cancer. It's not something that, at this point, I have so much cancer, a lot of people think that I'm that perhaps this is a quest to find a cure for myself. Unfortunately, I realize that the cancer has metastasized to such an extent in my body that that's impossible. But I believe firmly and I'm dedicated to the goal of accomplishing a cure for all other patients in my lifetime. I hope to see a cure or at least a targeted therapy exist for all carcinoid and hopefully related neuroendocrine tumor patients in my lifetime. And we've assembled a terrific group of scientific advisors to accomplish that. They're world-renowned cancer researchers as well as world-renowned neuroendocrine tumor researchers.
Hi, I'm uh, Ramesh Shivdasani. I'm uh, a medical oncologist and a laboratory scientist uh, at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, where I have for some years now been studying uh, two different aspects of gastrointestinal cancers. On the one hand, I see patients uh, morning a week uh, to give a second opinion on management of various cancers of the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, but the bulk of my time uh, is spent in laboratory research where I study the mechanisms and the pathways uh, by which embryos develop organs. This might sound like something that is remotely connected to cancer, if at all. Um, and in fact, uh, the connections are, um, are not absolutely clear uh, to everyone who thinks about the cancer problem. Uh, it turns out that we understand very little about how cells are actually wired together, and even less about how cells uh, come together to form a tissue and how tissues come together to create an organ. The thinking is that if we have a better understanding of how the blueprint is created, if we have a better feel for how cells talk to each other to create a tissue and how tissues maintain uh, their stable state, then we will be much better positioned to understand what it is that goes awry to produce unrestrained growth of tumors and to produce properties that normal cells never exhibit, which is migration away from their home base and their success and thriving in an environment that is otherwise alien to them. And the combination of these two properties are what makes cancer such a dreaded disease uh, namely metastasis. So normally cells are destined to be born in one place and to stay there for the rest of their lives. Cancer cells very occasionally will break those rules. They get away from their home base, uh, travel in the bloodstream or in lymphatic channels, and then set up shop in the liver or lungs or bone, which are the most common places for uh, cancers to spread. And it is this that makes cancer a difficult disease to manage uh, because cells that are growing elsewhere um, do not follow simple rules and are much harder to manage, to control, uh, than cells that are localized because in that situation they can be surgically um, removed, but when they've spread, often in large numbers, uh, a surgical approach uh, is practically impossible. Another mystery in carcinoid tumors is what exactly is the cell of origin? What is the original cell that received the insults and learned how to break the rules? We know that carcinoid tumors of the intestine probably belong to the, to the class of cells that normally produce hormones in that organ. But carcinoid tumors are closely related to tumors of various neuroendocrine cell types. And the precise cell that gives birth to each of these tumor types is largely unknown. And this may seem like an academic point but it's actually very, very important. And the reason it's important to know what the cell of origin is, is because different tumors are going to play true to their origins. Cells are going to be largely constructed, or largely instructed by, the, um, by their, um, by their in endogenous properties, by the properties that make them who they are to begin with. Once we understand what it is that a cell, what the basic rules are for that cell, 